In this exciting episode of Dirty Shop, do it yourself. I open a box. Or something, a box with straps on the outside. Hang my head in defeat. Here. And my wife does air squats. Look out the window. <laughs> well, I finally got my window. It was rather inconveniently shipped to my old house, in which I no longer live, and to which it wasn't addressed. And so I'm not sure why that was done. Uh, it seems like a bad policy to ship something just to an old address that wasn't wanted. I mean, you sh they should have kept it at the shipping facility or something if they couldn't send it where they thought it was supposed to go and just let me know. That would have been nice. But after a, a bunch of runaround, I finally chased it down. It took me almost all day yesterday to find the stupid thing. But at least I've got it now, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be able to install it, uh, but just not today. Uh, Fresno has once again forgotten that it's summertime, or at least close to summertime, and it's dumping rain outside, as you can probably hear. Which hence the reason the door shut. So it's a little dark. But here's the window. It's a 28, I believe, by 42, which is enough to fit nicely between these beams to go about there. Um, obviously, that's the front side of the outside. So this is the inside here. And it just it just happened that I ended up with one of these exit slider ones because it was the right size. Uh, it's got a it's made for the, the gap, I think it was a one and a half inch gap here, which is about the width of this the thickness of this wall. So it should clamp in nice and evenly into the wall. And then I have a spare exit slider, an exit in case I need to, but it's got the screen, got the window, and I think it was about 55 bucks for this window because it was like, there's somewhere on it, there's a scratch, um, but I haven't found it yet. So I'm sure it's there somewhere, it's just an older window, and it came with all the pieces, so I'll be good to go. That's too high? Yes. Well, if we're sitting on the couch right here, I want to be able to look out the window. I love you, too. <laughs> oh, I think it's out of reach. Um, yeah, I'm but now I, no, Right there. But now when I stand up, I can't see out the window. Yes, you can. You just have to look down. Really? You really want it this low? Yes. That's why I asked the boss. Why not? That's way you really want it that high? Yeah. No. Rather than having to fight this window up on the wall the whole time to draw my shapes and to get my cutout right, I'm going to put it on my car car cardboard here and cut a cardboard uh, pattern for it. That way I don't have to, this thing's pretty darn heavy with this lashes and stuff. And the lashes here on the on the ends would make it really hard to hold it up against the wall and try and get a clean shape drawn on the wall. So I'm just going to put it on here and draw around it with my Sharpie and then I'll have a nice piece that I can use for a, a pattern. So this is the basic position of the window. I'm putting it a little lower than I would like it, but my wife had a good point in that we want to be able to sit inside and look out. And since we're not putting a bench or any or a table or anything below it, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going about eight inches down from there, uh, from the top rim there, and I'm gonna draw a straight line across and I'll match my, my pattern up to it to get it so that it's square on the window and I'll make sure I'll measure from the edges and stuff to make sure it all looks square before I do any cutting. As you can hopefully see here, I've actually moved my line down about another inch. I wanted to get below that set of screws on top so I could leave them in, hopefully, um, for the frame. So I moved my, my line down an inch, so I'm kind of splitting the screws. And I'm hoping I can cut this out with my angle grinder and a metal blade. And then for the bigger stuff, I'll use my reciprocating saw here. Uh, I'm hoping that'll be enough to cut it. Uh, I might have to kind of find something else. This aluminum is pretty thin, though, so I should be able to get through it. But this sort of thing takes a steady hand. As usual, safety glasses and earphones.
Well, that didn't go quite as planned. So I actually, the saw jumped on me and I made a notch in my material here and then I didn't quite go through here, but it was close. So that's really bums me out. So I couldn't find the right blade for my saw. So I was using the bi-metal saw, which cuts it fine, but it's really jumpy. So I'm gonna put my metal bars here. I'll install the window and I'll just have to seal it in. So in light of my previous failure with using the wrong tool, I decided to go out and get a new tool, so I'm going to do an unboxing video for you. This tool comes in a box with straps on the outside. plastic bag on the inside. So uh, I still have this cold. That's why I'm so deadpan and kind of rough looking. But uh, when I buy a tool that I know I'm going to use a lot, I buy a quality tool. Um, and I've already got a few of these Porter cables. Um, and I've, you've seen me use some DeWalt stuff as well. Uh, the DeWalt stuff was from uh, an old system that I was using. I've switched over to this Porter cable now. I've been pretty happy with them. I got a drill gun, the circular saw. I got one of these. And so I'll slowly move up and just get all my tools to match up. But it's worth it to me to get the right tools uh, when I know I'm going to use them a lot. If I've got a tool that I know I'm going to use like once, like that, you know, 24 and a half millimeter wrench or whatever, I don't really care about buying the cheaper one because um, I know I'm not going to use it much. But um, when I know I'm going to use the tool a lot, buy a decent quality tool. I'm pretty happy with Porter Cable. I'm not particularly endorsing them, but they've worked well for me. install this uh, patch on the lower part of the window where I made my hole and I'm going to put the window in using this 100% uh, silicone clear and I just have had better luck with silicone holding up to uh, outdoor applications especially than I have with latex. I just don't really like latex caulking at all um, and silicone just seems to stick to more things uh, better so this is what I tend to use. Um, it's fairly inexpensive and it holds up well. So my window here is pretty much ready to install. I've got uh, the little hole that I made in it patched up and I'll get it cleaned up and covered later so it looks nice but for now it's hopefully sealed and nice. And the window fits in the hole, the trim, the trim strip fits on the inside, it took a little, bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of carving to get that to fit just right but I didn't want to make my hole too big to start because it's really hard to make something smaller again but you can make it bigger so I, I made it a little more size. So what I'm going to do now is if you look at these windows and we'll get up here close for you, there's this groove around the exterior edge and that overlaps the outside here you can see that gap there so you could put screws through the trim strip that go into that groove and it kind of keeps them lined up and you can go in quite quite a ways to hold them on so i'm probably gonna have to pre-drill the holes to get them to uh to go in with the screws i got i picked up these nice stainless steel uh pan heads that'll hopefully be uh the correct size and will fit well with this window so i'm going to get this window installed i'm going to tape it up there so that it stays and it doesn't fall out while I work on it. And then I'm gonna put a couple of the screws in and make sure everything fits right. And then I'll pull the window back off, put the glue on the back side here, and then reinstall it with all the glue on it. Yes, my window is installed and I didn't even put it in upside down, which is always a good sign. So it's getting pretty darn hot in here now. So I think I will open the window to let some air flow through. Details. Let's 
test the uh, exit. I didn't need an exit, but it's cheap, so heck, as it goes. Oh, push the wrong part. It's like, oh, maybe that was it. There it goes. Kind of scary. Now, yeah, I'm thinking it's supposed to like fall out completely. Um, if you need to get out, which is kind of scary, but I don't think I need to get out, so let's close that up. Oh. Nice. There we go. Now I can put the rest of the trim in and put my beds back in, and uh, I do still need to glue down the floor, although it's looking pretty nice and flat. It's probably not necessary, but... I'm gonna do it anyways. So I'm gonna get all the rest of this trim installed, beds back in, and maybe we do some more camping. Well, here I've got it. The, uh, the floor is all ready to go and ready to glue down. I've got it trimmed to fit uh, where it needed to be trimmed down, just a couple of spots so it didn't bow up. Uh, there's a little bit of a cutout here that I didn't do is from uh, the previous guy who cut this piece. And there'll be a little bit of gap on some spots because the original trim on this trailer was a little bit thicker on the walls. Remember that plywood from the first video uh, that I took out was a little thicker than my, my current walls. And so there's some gaps. So I pushed the, as much of the, of the plastic to this side as possible because the beds will be on this side and it won't be as obvious that there's a little bit of gap against the wall. So I'm going to roll this up and I'm going to just use the same silicone with the mold resistance. And I'm going to do just like big S curves down uh, to the side and then all, all around the edges I'll lay a clean bead to get the, make sure the edges stay down and then the outside edges or the inside will just have a uh, general uh, flow. I think that, I think that will be enough. When you're using silicone like this, if you pull on it and you let it, and you wipe that piece off and let it go, it's going to continue to bulge out. But if you just push this button when you're done, it'll stop gooing out because it just takes the pressure of the, of the thing off of it. These are the uh, aluminum corner trim pieces that I had. They've got this old paint on them, which is a little bit ugly and a bit rough, but I've sanded it down with a uh, sponge pad, uh, like a, a foam sanding pad and gotten it nice and smooth. And now I'm gonna spray paint it with this flat or this satin brown uh, enamel and I figure that'll be enough to uh, to make it look decent in the corners I don't think it's gonna be miracle but I think it'll work, look good enough for me to be able to use so I've made sure that the wind is blowing the right direction so I don't get any overspray and I put it out here where there's nothing else that it's gonna get sprayed on This is pretty much a wrap for my trailer project for at least most of this summer. I may get a few small projects done, but I don't have anything big left to do. Uh, I'm gonna, I'd like to get a tongue box on the front. I put a little fan on this on this uh, vent down here, uh, a couple other little things like that. But for the most part, I've got it ready to go for the summertime. I've got my window in. I've got my trim and my paneling all painted and done. A few mistakes here and there, but for the most part, it's it's good and functional. Uh, the beds are all reinstalled. The floor is glued down. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I could have done better, but I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll see what else comes up.